Hello, welcome to part three of this little workshop on creating animated clouds inside of Houdini using volumes and volume bobs. And in this video, we will talk about how we can actually animate our video using some noise offset animation and then create a looped version of our cloud and then export it and, uh, for example, render it in Blender using the VDB, import VDB and uh, make it look kind of pretty. And here is how it is going to look inside of uh, Houdini. Here's the offset animations. Here's um, our file caches and all that kind of cool stuff. So let's learn everything. Let's rebuild this network and let's get going. And before we begin, I just want to say that if you're interested in supporting the channel and getting the asset files, you can join the Patreon. If you're not interested in doing that, well, maybe another time. So anyway, if you remember previously, we had created the cloud using the volume bob. And you might look at this and think, what's going on? I'm not sure <laughs> what's all this stuff uh, that is happening, right? How we can do, how we can create this. Let me just increase the voxel size. So it's kind of uh, things a little bit faster. Let's just delete all these channels. So we kind of can start from the very beginning. And we jump inside into our Bob network that we built in the previous video. And as you can see, there is this thing that's called offset and it has been promoted outside. So how do we do that? Right. So if you remember uh, anything from the introduction to attributes inside of Houdini, you know that you can actually get the, for example, the noise, right? And you can middle mouse click and get promote parameter. So let me just uh, showcase it once again. For example, if we want to animate the, I don't know, roughness. Okay, so uh, you will see that we can incre um, increase the roughness, right? So it kind of gives us a little bit of a different result here. Or we can decrease the roughness, so it doesn't really matter. So what I'm trying to say is that we can control that and we can actually animate that if we middle mouse button on the roughness and create promote parameter. I mean, uh, while while I'm still holding the middle mouse button, hover over promote parameter, unclick the middle mouse button, and all of a sudden, if we go back to our geometry network, you will see that we indeed now have a new parameter that we can actually animate. So simple example would be if we go to frame number one and hold down the alt and left mouse click, uh, we will create the key and if I go to, let's say, I don't know, 24, I can, for example, increase this and left mouse click. Okay, so we now have uh, animation. We can preview it if we hold down shift and middle mouse click on the roughness text. You will see that we indeed, as you can see, have this uh, is in, is out animation that actually controls the roughness. And if I scroll down on the bottom, our frames, you will see that indeed here it's being, well, pretty much it's the same. It's just that we here are visualizing how our roughness is being animated. Again, let's delete this because I don't think I want to animate roughness. Delete the channels. Okay, so next, if you remember that we established that it was uh, pretty useful to actually just animate the offsets inside of our volume box here. So what we can do is, uh, for example, we can use these types of assets and uh, I'll just explain how uh, this works. So basically, if we write offset, for example, negative 4.5 and we start writing plus dollar T as in time, uh, for example, divided by 10 and press enter, you will see that each frame, if I press now play, each frame, it will increase by dollar T divided by well, 10 is basically uh, time in seconds divided by 10. So it kind of automatically procedurally creates some sort of animation. As you can see, our cloud indeed does something. So if I just press play, you will see that our noise starts to go through. And let's say we animate the Z axis as well, plus dollar T divided, for example, by five, right? And if we now, uh, let's say, hold down this little button and create flip book with new settings. And let's say from one to 30 size will be, I don't know, full HD. Where is it? Here we go. And I can just play, uh, press start. We can now see the results of our procedural animation. 
in a flipbook so that we can actually preview it in real time. So if I press play here, you will see that indeed, as you can see, we have the volume swimming through our cloud and it gives a perception of cloud being animated. So that's pretty cool. Now that we have established this, I think we can do just a little bit addition to here. For example, the offset of the second noise, uh, let's say in the y-axis will be negative time, negative dollar t divided by 20, for example. So it's kind of have uh, up and down movement a little bit. Let's see how that might look. Uh, so uh, what I'm trying to say is this is kind of like your personal preference. Uh, you can check out uh, the ones that you like most yourself. It doesn't really matter which uh, numbers you just tap in here. Just remember that dollar $t is actually time in seconds. And to make it kind of smooth and flowing, uh, it's a better, it's a good idea to divide it by five or by 20 or whatever. And of course, if you click on those assets, you will see uh, the difference that it makes. So you can have kind of like a rough estimate of what's going on. Okay, so this is fine, but what we need is to actually create a cache so that we can make the loop and make all the good stuff. So we do the cache, it says file cache. Um, in this section right here, before we actually create an animated loop, we can make it a BGOSC or VDB. It does not really matter at this point. Right, but just so that we are consistent, let's say VDB. Okay, so the base name, uh, base folder, as it suggests, if I middle mouse button it, it will say loops export v1. Um, let's say the base folder will be tutorial export. So if I middle mouse here, you will see that it has documents, uh, work in progress, cloud suite, tutorial export. Okay, cool. Uh, here I will delete the channels because we don't need 240. I think we'll be fine just with 65. And that's that. All I have to do now is press save to disk and wait a minute or two and see what we get. Okay, so now that we have our actual file cache, you can see that I can scroll and it will be relatively fast going. So this is pretty cool. However, what we need to do now is to actually make it loop. It's uh, relatively straightforward using the side effects labs. You can just uh, start tapping loop and you will see that it has labs make loop. I'll just drop it here. And now all I need to do is shift control left mouse button, say here 64, because we actually have just, if you remember 65, I can, I can write 65 here as well, but you know, uh, I want to have 64 frames. So if we now see after the frame here, if we go to file cache, if we go to after frame 65, you'll see that everything disappears magically. However, if I go to make loop and I go after the frame 65, you will see that indeed our animation is being looped and it looks really smooth and everything works just fine. So what we need to do now is create a new cache. Here it is, file cache. And now, um, what was it? Tutorial export. All right. So let's say tutorial export and we can say loops. And again, control shift left mouse button. Here we can say that the end should be the frame number 64. All right, so we have 64 frames that are looped and we go from one to 64, praise. Uh, press save to disk. I mean, first we have to switch it to VDB so the Blender can actually read the file. And now we can press save to disk. As you can see, it's much faster because we don't really calculate anything. We just interpolate the previous cache into the loop and write it down again. So now I think we should jump back into Blender. And let me just enable viewport, uh, delete this. And now what we can do is press shift a go to volume import open vdb go to our exports tutorial export loop here it is and as you can see i can say import open vdb but if i press the n key or here you will see that detect sequences should be enabled so that it actually understands however sometimes it actually does not understand which is kind of funny and lo and behold here is our cloud however um, there is a couple of things that we can do 
uh, first of all will be if you see that if we go uh, well if we scroll it does not enable sequence by default so that's kind of weird uh, next up we will have to say that the frames is actually 64 and it should not be clipping it should be repeating because remember we created a loop just for that reason alone so as you can see if i go outside our actual limits of frames, you will see that it is indeed looped and it's working as it expected. Now we go to the shading and let's create a new shift A search volume. Here is the volume info. We can connect density to the density. Now we can go and add some tweakable density so that we can multiply it, for example, by I don't know, four or 18 or <laughs> whichever you want. Now, if you are looking at it in Eevee, right? So let's see, rendered and we go to Eevee. It, actually, you might see that first of all, you will not have volumetric lightning and or shadows enabled. So enable those. And next, the tile size is usually, I think, eight pixels by default and make it two so that you can actually have a little bit more resolution. So. Now that we have our volumetric lightning and shadows, you can see that by, uh, using EV, and of course, if we, whoops, if we just go and increase our values here, um, it will increase the density, or we can render it using cycles. Of course, don't forget to enable the GPU, and in cycles, in shading, I think that multiplying by 46 is a little bit too much. Um, if we multiply, I don't know, like six, it should be fine. In cycles, the important thing to enable is actually uh, go to the light paths, right? And go to the volume and usually it's zero. You will see that uh, the light itself will not penetrate the cloud and it will not get this smooth kind of cloud glow effect inside it. But if I increase it to, for example, by two, you will see that indeed inside starts to get, it's almost like subsurface scattering, but for volumetrics for clouds. Finally, what I want to do, I think, is I want to go to shading and uh, tweak the cloud color just a little bit. Maybe make it kind of like this peachy color here. And the absor absorption color will be kind of like this. That's my usual go-to to make it look kind of a little bit prettier. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is here is our cloud. It indeed looks kind of pretty. Of course, you can go back to shading. Uh, increase the density a little bit and tweak it to your heart's content and that is how you create loops animations inside of Houdini export the VDBs import them in our case in Blender and render it out using EV and cycles so thanks for watching I hope you learned something if you want to learn more about a lot of things 3d because we have a lot of things to cover more don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you have some ideas and suggestions, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. And hopefully I will see you in the next videos. With that, I wish you a good day and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.